Hey guys, welcome to my channel. You're already hearing background noises, guys, because I'm out and about today taking care of business. I hope you guys have been doing well. I know I have not been on in full capacity for the last few days or so. But believe me, there is content waiting to be uploaded. Um, sometimes, you know, I just need to handle other things, take care of other things, and not limited to resting. So as I was out today, guys, I wanted to speak with you about, you know, just some practical things that I hope will be very helpful to you all. And again, it's about matters of the heart because I think it's important to talk about these things because a lot of the things that get a lot of people caught up is um, matters of the heart, you know, relationships, um, toxic ones, ones that where there could be, there's no... You don't know where the relationship is going. You're just in it. But you want companionship. You're getting what you can get out of it. While still frustrated. And dissatisfied. And so we're going to just be talking about. The process of moving forward. And in healing. In relationships. And we're going to talk about intimate partners. And relationships for a second. People that you may have been interested in. That broke your heart, that hurt, that hurts you. And I always say the very first, the very first step to healing, one of the very first steps is being accountable. Accountable as far as the part that you played in that relationship. You may have been with someone who was a compulsive cheater, compulsive liar, compulsive abuser. Or just someone that was just jealous all the time. A person that may have taken money from you. A person that may have destroyed your property. A person that destroyed your credit because you co-signed for them. But in the midst of it all, with the exception of a few, but most times, we must take, be accountable for making the choices that we did because sometimes more often than not more often than not there are warning signs there were things that was was you saw early on or well ahead of that final blow that they gave you you know what i mean there are things that you saw that they were doing they were maybe perhaps you caught them in lies perhaps you you're dating this person and then someone comes out the woodwork i see this happen a lot with women so another woman is reaching out to you and saying hey uh i'm seeing him or whatever the case is and what do you do you may allow that man to talk you out of the obvious he's going to tell you a story of that the woman is lying that's not what it is or he will apologize to you for not telling you right away but look you're the one I want to be with and sometimes you may follow that narrative because you want to be with this person but then you have to realize and look at look at how he's doing things he still had things unfinished business or the woman that he's telling you that they weren't together that's the one he's still seeing that's the one he left you for eventually there are lots of things that you may discover about that woman she lies she's manipulative she's selfish she doesn't like your family she doesn't get along with anybody in your family but yet you allow that you you still you still continue in this relationship with this woman before the final blow and what am I saying I'm not saying that you're deserving of what happened but more often than not there are always warning signs and things that we see well ahead of time before 
before they reach the place that they can do something that is destructive they do something that you're still recovering from you see you loan money to someone that never had money and you have to think about it this person is always broke they never have money they don't have the credit to get certain things and you put your credit on the line for them guys we have to learn lessons because i jacked up my credit helping somebody <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> and i'm building it back up today yes helping and all i will say just to not get into detail is that this was not a random individual this was someone that i 100 believe that they would do the right thing because of who they are because of the relationship that we had the tie that we had together uh there was no way that i felt that this person would have done that and i am trying to avoid being very specific here okay so now building back my credit doing all these different things okay um paying off debts that are i guess it is mine because i i i signed for these things to help this individual to start their business and all the stuff yeah <laughs> So, but here's the thing. What's the lesson to learn? Regardless of who the person is, even if you're related to them, you have to kind of look at it like this. If they don't have credit or their credit is messed up that they can't get something, don't co-sign. Now, sometimes when it's your child, they may not have any credit yet. And you need to have some credit to get credit. So if you're helping your child and you're buying your child a car or something like that, all right? There's, there are some situations where there's certain people you can help them. But you have to use wisdom. But we're talking about people that their credit is ruined, so they can't afford to get this anymore. Don't put your credit on the line for anybody. And sometimes that's what you did. This person is always broke, but they're asking to borrow money. Um, you're going to have to make a decision. You, you just need to either give this person it, give them a, just give them the money. Because if they need to borrow $20, that means they don't even have 20 they need to borrow $40. They don't even have $40. But they want to borrow $100 to pay you back. It's not going to happen. And they're going to tell you, you know my situation. So you may have had that happen to you. And you you loan this person. And then they keep coming back and asking you. You also have to take accountability for the people that come back and turn into little monsters, so to speak, in your life. Because I don't think you should continue to loan someone money. If you loan somebody money three times in four months, that's a lot. If every month or every other month the person keeps asking you for money, you keep giving it to them, then they start to get an attitude when you tell them no. Because you have been, there's an expectation. You've always been giving it to me. Why can't you give it to me again? And unfortunately and sadly, it's not a child that's saying this to you. It's a grown adult with hair on their chest. A grown adult that's beyond puberty. That is talking this way. Okay? So, we have to... The first, the first step to healing is being accountable for our role in what we did. In what we allowed in what we aided and abetted, the behaviors that we aided and abetted. We entertain that. When God shows you the truth about somebody and you allow their sad story to overshadow you, when you allow your, your kind heart to rule over wisdom, when you allow compassion to rule, to overtake uh, discernment, 
And as believers in the Lord, you definitely have to have, in addition to the love, I always say this, in addition to the grace, the mercy, the love, and forgiveness, you must have wisdom, brains, use discernment, use discretion, put two and two together here. This is not making any sense because then, and um, also don't ignore the obvious. This person's cheated on you. The proof is right there in black and white. Don't allow yourself to be talked out of the indiscretion that's there. This is their character and this is who they are. And then you may say, well, I'm going to forgive them. Okay, you forgave them and they did it again. This person has a bad temper, a bad attitude. They have ruined holidays. They've ruined your events. They have ruined moments that were supposed to be for your family. They come with their attitude and ruin things. They have a, everybody knows that when this person comes around, everyone is trying their best not to upset them. And they get used to that. Why? Because you allow that. So accountability is first and foremost in healing, in knowing, why did I allow this? Why did I allow this to go on for so long? Why did I allow this person to behave this way for so long in my life? And those things are going to require deep soul searching. It's going to require perhaps going back to your childhood and to your beginnings and seeing Certain things that you thought and felt was normal that was not normal. It's, it's going to require you to go back to the words that were spoken to you when you were a little boy or a little girl. The way that you were treated by those who were supposed to be protecting you. Because that's going to help you to understand why you allow the things that you allow today. Why you can't say no? Why it's so important for you to be light? But nevertheless, guys, there are just things that we allowed, allowed, and a certain behavior that we may normalize. And so you have perpetrators that will draw to you constantly and will do things. That purse, that perpetrator could confidently walk to walk to the family reunions and these events in your life confident that their behavior is going to be allowed accepted and overlooked while the rest of everybody is trying to do everything in their power not to upset them that man that woman at some point they're going to realize you're not going to leave after breaking your trust so many times and you keep they know they're gonna have this long conversation with you about the same thing but you're not going anywhere your pastor or whoever's gonna keep disrespecting you because he or she already crossed that line you have to think of how they behaved when you first met them they didn't come to you with that assuming personality or or being presumptuous they didn't they were respectful they were courteous they were nice all of that and then they reached this point where they're gonna see what they can get away with so the first time they shunned you and walked by you and then you're running behind them trying to get them to pay attention to you and and they said something that was rude and disrespectful and you took it are you surprised that now they're starting to lash out and say things in a public setting and thinking they can say whatever they can say to you and in front of your spouse the first time you allow that person to disrespect your spouse and you say nothing you gave them permission to be able to harass and and to talk your spouse down. So the so when they reach a place of becoming abusive, 
when you reach a place where you're in a relationship that the person has become so disrespectful and so inconsiderate and so indifferent, you have to be willing to look at yourself and take accountability for how you allowed it and becoming stronger. Learning to become stronger and asking God to help you. Because in some cases, guys, it's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's going to be by the Spirit of God that leads you and shows you how to overcome and how to heal and how you messed up. Because if you don't, you will keep drawing the same people in your life. Meaning, it will be a different phase, but the same scenario. You have the same selfish friends. If you don't get to the bottom of What is causing you? Why are you constantly bringing the same type of individuals in your life? If you continue to be the way that you are, if you continue to be needy, if you continue to be, uh, turn a blind eye, allow people to bully you, you're always going to draw the same kind of individuals. You're not going to draw genuine people because there's something in you, something even in your prop, your persona, where if you had people who were kind and good, you would not be able to function with that because you're used to being mistreated. Rejection is your potion. So you say you don't like it, but I see this all the time with people that I've met. They will claim that they want to have friends and they'll tell you this whole story about what happened to them. And then when you get close to them and you're being a lawyer friend and you're being nice and you're being kind, you realize that they are tainted they have issues they don't know how to handle you being a genuine friend and they're 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 just shattered because they're not healed it's like a broken vase trying to hold flowers and trying to hold water you can't put beautiful flowers and pour water pour life into what's broken it's not gonna hold it's shattered so guys all i'm saying is this Get the help that you need. Seek God. There's nothing wrong with prayer. There's nothing wrong with seeking the Lord because he will show you that your beginnings. And in addition to that, guys, there's nothing wrong with getting counseling. I always tell people, be careful with getting counseling at the church. You don't want to eat where you poop. That's just all I'm saying. You don't want to, you don't want to poop where you eat. Go to a place where you may have some, there are some churches that has, you know, the the counselors are wise, but there's lots of free counsel in other places because I feel like this is just my opinion. I would not want to bring my family problems into the church. I just wouldn't. In rare cases, and I'm going to say rare because it is rare to find places where you can really pour out and it's not going to come back to haunt you. But seek counsel, guys, and good godly counsel. And there's nothing wrong with getting regular counseling. They can help you with how to cope and how to understand your beginnings and all that good stuff. Just don't leave God out of it. Okay? And just find out what brought me to this place in my life. Because you have to face you first. You have to face you. You have to face yourself and why you are allowing these things to happen. And then once you do that, guys, and you face those things, now it's going to be the beginning of healing. And when you begin to heal and face what caused you to do that, then with prayer and seeking God and getting counseling you'll make better choices and you're not going to keep running into the same people over and over and when you see them you're going to recognize it and you're going to be like okay no this is not going to be this is not going I'm not going to repeat the cycle and then you can make the change for yourself and for your future we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us so guys I hope this helps you The first step to healing is not about what they did and what they said and what a dog he is and what he was. Because you know what? Dogs only come where they're welcome. If she was a user and abuser, 
she was welcomed somehow. We have to look at ourselves and say, how come? Why was this person so comfortable doing that? What was my role here? And yes, they may have been the ones that's perpetrating and doing stuff that's wrong and they shouldn't do it. And they were wrong for it. I'm not, I am not negating that, guys. But all I'm telling you is you have to look at yourself because you were supposed to be your protector, so to speak. You are supposed to look out for you. And if you are allowing an abuser and a liar and a cheater to do whatever to you, if you didn't stand in the gap for you first, then while they are to blame, they were also enabled. You know what I mean? So guys, I'll talk to you soon. I hope this video makes some sense. And please share your thoughts and comments below if you'd like. All right, guys. Bye.